hello guys welcome to another video and in this video we're going to start with section 5.0 Cisco firewall technologies and this is for the CCN security exam um, 210 to 60 and as you can see we have gone all of this section 1 2 3 and 4 and now we're going to start with section 5 and the first section is 5.1 and which is we are going to describe operational strengths and weaknesses of different firewall technologies. So we're going to go over proxy firewalls, application firewall, personal firewall, and we are probably going to start with this compare stateful and versus stateless firewalls. Okay, so there we go. And let's start with this PowerPoint. Hopefully, I don't get you bored. Hopefully, you don't fall asleep on me. But let's go ahead and um, start with this PowerPoint. So the first firewall that we need to understand is the proxy firewalls. So proxy firewall is when the firewall sends traffic on behalf of the host. If a host is trying to connect to a web page, the firewall gets the traffic and sends it to the web page like it is the firewall asking for it, right? So as you can see right here, um, we sent the traffic, you see number one, um, the host sends the traffic to the server so what's going to do the server is going to um, ask for the web page like it, it like if it is the server asking for it so the host does not get into this so the server or the server or the proxy firewall asks for it like it is a ser this proxy firewall asking for it and what this is going to do is the, ser the web server is going to send it to the proxy firewall and the proxy firewall then is going to um, is going to take a look at that web page to make sure that there is no any cross-site scripting attack, any XSS attacks. So after it, it goes over it and it doesn't find any attack or any malware, then it sends it to the host, right? And as you can see right here, oops, let me go back. Um, so after the firewall gets the web page, it inspect, inspect it and then sends it to the host, like as you can see right here um, on this uh, page, in this image. And the proxy, what it does is it adds an extra step to the process, which could slow down. Um, it could it could be a little bit slower on your network if you're using a proxy firewall because what it happens is that it the host sends it to the proxy and the pro the proxy puts the host on hold until it inspects the website and then it sends it back to you. And proxy servers are powerful defense against cross-site scripting XSS attacks to carry out this type this attack type and malicious script is injected into the web pages, right? So since the proxy server is inspecting every single part of the web page, it makes sure that there is no cross-site scripting attack. And also when there's a proxy server like this, um, it is really hard to get to the host because um, the outside network is never dealing with the host, it's always actually dealing with a proxy server, right? And this is how it happens when you don't have a proxy server. It just, I need a web, web page X, and then the external network just sends you the um, the web page, but they also send you a here's your page and a bonus nasty script, like like a cross site scripting XSS, XSS attack. Right? So that is um, a good way to have a firewall, a proxy firewall. Um, and here's a big, bigger picture. And now we're going to go over application firewall. And an application firewall is a type of firewall that controls network access to, from, and by an application or service. Such products monitor the use of applications and block any activities that don't meet the configured policy of the firewall. Application firewalls protect application communications in a similar manner that network firewalls secure network communications because they are aware of the languages application to use, use to transmit information. They can deny or modify invalid or suspicious activities, protecting organizations against attacks. So that what that's what an application firewall is, just a layer five and above firewall. And a personal firewall, it is, a personal firewall is an application which controls network traffic to and from a computer permitting or design applications based on a secure security policy typical it works as an application layer firewall a personal firewall differs from a conventional firewall in terms of a scale a personal firewall will usually protect only the computer on which it is installed 
as compared to a conventional firewall which is normally installed on a designated interface between two or more networks such as a router or a proxy server. Personal firewall you can take it anywhere. If you go to the cafe shop you can right you can take the personal firewall and be secure because the cafe shop network is are unsecure like you always know. So you can either have an application, you can have like the Windows Defender, whatever that's a firewall, Windows firewall that is a personal firewall. Or I know that they have like devices that you can have where you can plug in and make it um, your personal firewall. So those are the three types of firewall that you need to know. Proxy firewalls, um, application firewall, and personal firewall. So now we're going to compare stateful versus stateless firewalls. So stateless firewall, stateless firewalls watch network traffic and restrict or block packets based on source and destination address or other static values so it is not dynamic it is a fixed value it is a static value just remember that they are not aware of traffic patterns or data flows a stateless firewall uses simple rule sets that do not account for the possibility that a packet might be received by the firewall pretending to be something you ask for right so they can do a spoofing attack on this firewall a stateless firewall filter also known as an access control list acl does not statefully inspect traffic instead it evaluates packets content static statically and does not keep tra uh, track of the state of the network connections so they don't keep track it is a stateless right it doesn't save any configuration it doesn't save any data that is um, flowing through the firewall um, so therefore it has with protocols that use that it has problems with protocols that use dynamic protocols like ftp also it does not protect against the ip spoofing because it does not save anything that was previously learned so it does not have our cache i believe so stateless does not save any configuration it only uses um it only uses destination addresses or or other static values to block or allow the traffic in and on the other hand stateful firewall um, can watch traffic streams from end to end they are aware of communication paths and can implement various ip security or ipsec functions such as tunnels and encryption in technical terms this means that stateful firewalls can tell what stage a TCP connection is in, open, open send, synchronize, synchronization, acknowledge, or establish. It can tell if the MTU has changed and whether packets have it fragmented. Stateful lets an inside host start a conversation but do not let an outside host start a conversation. This accomplish this is accomplished by their session table, also known as the state table. Stateless firewalls are typically faster and perform better under heavier traffic loads. A stateful firewalls are better at identifying unauthorized and forged communication. So pick your poison. You want a stateful or stateless firewall? I want a stateful. That sounds a lot better than anything else. And how a stateful firewall works? Well, given an understanding of TCP session rules, three-way handshake, scene act, scene, scene, act, act, along with the existence of the state table a stateful firewalls can ensure that those rules are followed network attacks often breaks rules confusing systems and causing them to behave in un unintended fashions when stateful firewalls recognize that rules are being broken they will drop offending packets and mitigate the attack take for example tcp connections the connection must begin with a scene packet if the policy on the firewall allows the session allows the session the scene packet is allowed and a new entry in the state table is created right saving it in the state table the state table stores information such as the source and destination ip addresses and tcp ports tcp flags and sequence numbers at this point there is only one valid packet that can flow in this session it is the server's sync act packet in response to the client's sync and it needs to be acknowledging the actual sequence number that was originally presented by the client. Hmm. Interesting how they work, right? So this is how we went over the proxy firewalls, application firewalls, personal firewall, and then we went into the stateless 
firewall and stateful firewall and how stateful firewall works. Um, so we are going to we are going to leave it right now. We're going to leave it right there. And on the next video, if you want to learn more, we are going to go over static nets, static dynamic, dynamic pads, and static pads. So we are going to start with the network address translation and the different flavors of them. And like always, guys, if you have a Twitter account, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips. If you like the video, go ahead and click the like button, the thumbs up button. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.